This is gonna be a small group. Thanks for uh, for hanging with me. Sorry, I had to reschedule yesterday. I had an appointment at ten o'clock. What's up, Will? What's up, Stacy? What's up, Richard? Hold on. I think we lost your audio. Jason. Oh, I'm muted. I'm sitting there talking to myself. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm like, Stacy, what's up? Are you repping the Padres or what? And then I'm like, oh, she's just staring at me. Okay, cool. And then I'm looking at Richard talking about how I'm actually a Giants fan. And then like literally nobody, <laughs> literally nobody's talking back. Good morning. Thanks for hanging with me. Sorry, I had an appointment at 10 o'clock yesterday. Wait, Jason, you're actually a Giants fan? I'm a Giants fan. Yeah. All right. So I live, I was born and raised in Sacramento. Okay. Um, and so I'm a Giants, Kings, Niners, like all the Bay Area and then Sacramento team. And then I moved, but I moved here 12 years ago. And so like, obviously, like just being around downtown, I lived in downtown San Diego for 10 years. So like, and we have a mutual enemy, like, cause we're playing the Dodgers tonight. So like we can, I can get behind, you know, anything that's uh, Ariana, I think, hold on. I think we're losing you right now. Hold on. <laughs> um so we have a mutual enemy anytime any what is it the friend the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend there you I go mean, Mellum. i see you i see you i grew up in socal like in ventura county but i still for some reason i hate the dodgers i just grew <laughs> up I, I was an angels fan growing up but i'm a giants fan now for sure golden yeah. State. there you go Niners. <laughs> yeah, see, I haven't been to the new Chase Stadium or Chase. Uh, I, I used to go to games at Oracle, but I've never been to yeah. uh, the new stadium. It looks pretty dope. Same. I, I haven't been. I haven't been yet. So, I mean, you're in San. You, well, how far is that from Mid Peninsula, like San Mateo? So, I actually live in San Francisco, but I'm like right on the border of San Francisco and Daly City. So, yeah. Daly City kind of starts Mid Peninsula, so San Mateo County. Hmm. Um, but Chase Center is probably about. 20 minutes from me isn't is chase center like on like pier like the pier like down in it's, like pier 39 area or like it's nearby? in the soma area so south of market area yep. so pier 39 is on the north end uh chase is on the the south end oh cool okay so yeah, closer to on the other side of the the bay bridge as opposed to the golden gate bridge yeah okay dope I saw Trisha pop on and then she, she muted uh, her video really quick. That's good because she just beat me in fantasy football this week. And so I don't want to stare. I at her did. Anyways. You're actually the only pe person I've beat this entire time. <laughs> you didn't, Why I does didn't, it make you feel better? I'm I sorry. didn't need your, I didn't need your color in this situation. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <though. laughs> the 0 and 4 Trisha Casebeer beat me. Um, okay, so I'm going to go because I think it's probably going to be a shorter crew today, obviously, because I moved the date. So thanks for bearing with me. I had an appointment yesterday. So I want to talk about geographic farming. I mean, in essence, we can like if we open it up, we can there, there's other ways to farm too. like I don't want to necessarily but I want to kind of focus this on geographic farming because that's that's what I intended on talking about the whole time. Like I so someone on my team, um, Amanda, she's always like, she, she works with like probate and lawyers and stuff like that. I'm like, well, consider that your farm, right? If you have like a, a list, a CRM or a spreadsheet of like 150 lawyers with their email addresses and addresses, you can theoretically do this same kind of techniques for them, but it's not a geographic farm. It's a, it's a personnel farm or something like that. Like if you have the same 150 people, you can call that a farm. But for today's purposes, I'm going to be talking about geographic farming and, and some of the tactics that, that I've used throughout my career and the ones we're working with now. Um, and then I'll open it up a little bit too, to see what you guys are doing. Um, first and foremost, I think anytime you're establishing a geographic farm, like it's always been my personal preference or like that it's close to where you live. Um, and so obviously the reason being is that to make a really successful geographic farm, one of the things you really have to do is like, 
be active in that community a little bit, right? So you have to like, not only just be like mailing the community, but you're going to be probably holding open houses there any chance that you can get. Hopefully, if your geographic farm is working, you're getting listings in there, which means you're door knocking the neighborhood around it. So like, obviously, I live in La Mesa now, I lived in downtown for 10 years, like those make kind of geographic sense. They're 10, 15 minutes away from each other. If I started farming Carlsbad, it's going to be a lot less likely that that's going to be successful because that's 45 minutes away. You know what I mean? So even if I did get listings up there, it's like, that's a 45 plus 40. Now we're talking about hour and a half commutes to go to those listings. I'm much more likely to not do open houses on Saturday and things like that because the, the, the geographic farm is just too far away. So that's not a tried and like a hard and fast rule, like especially here in San Diego, all the big money communities are up north. And so like, maybe I'll drive to Rancho Santa Fe to, to, to take some listings. But that being said, if you really want to kind of dial in starting from scratch, I think being close to the geographic area helps a lot. Not to mention, obviously, if you're farming like the area you live, you just know more about the area, obviously, right? You know what the coffee shops are and you know what the good, you know, the, the little back road to get to the Trader Joe's is. So you, as you're talking to the people in your community, it's going to come off a little bit more natural. And then lastly, when you sit across from them at the coffee table and they're asking you why they should list their house and you're like, oh, well, I live around the corner. That helps. You know what I mean? Just to have local knowledge of your of your expertise. So we'll, we'll call that rule number one, although I don't necessarily think it's, it's like an end all be all. It's just going to be a really um, helpful thing for you if you're picking a community that you're close geographically in. So once you've identified kind of a community that you want to start in, uh, budget's going to be kind of a constraint on the next part because you're going to want to, you know, if, if you're assuming that each postcard that you draft is about 75 to 80 cents, right? But by the time it's printed and mailed, then you might be able to find it a little cheaper. You know, handwritten cards are going to be a little bit more, but let's, let's just say 75 cents for postage and the printing and the, the thing. Now, you know, so if you do 300 uh, homes, if you have a community that's 300 home, that's probably what, two, $225, $250. So, so now you're going to talk about budget, like how big should your farm be? Well, it's going to be based on your budget. If you have $1,000 to spend, you're probably going to want to get about 750 homes, uh, give or take. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you can go a little bit above that. You can go a little bit less. But I think that somewhere in the 500 to 1,000 range is, an, is a great way to establish a farm. It's probably going to give you enough like turnover at any given time to get you some at-bats so that you can start to see listings come out of it. Um, does that mean you shouldn't start a farm that's 150 homes? I mean, not necessarily. It's just like the turnover is probably going to take a little bit longer for those homes to get listed in those areas. So you might take you longer to see the success from your farm. And I've found that when starting a new farm somewhere around 500 to a thousand is a great entry point to where it's somewhat manageable and affordable. Uh, like right now we're up to about 2,500 homes that we farm. Um, we've, I'll talk about it more at the end, but we've actually gotten away from just specific geographic locations. We have a, a farm of 2000 homes that our marketing company curator has basically targeted as like likely to sell, you know what I mean? And they've, uh, they work with, um, like a third party service to identify that. So it's not even geographic anymore. It's more um, just like likely to sell based on uh, age of the home, how long they've owned it, owner occupied, things like that. But in the meantime, like again, bringing it back in, talking about geographic farming, uh, you wanna establish a local community with about 500 to a thousand homes. That's a great place to start. So typically what I like to do, like when I've set up these farms in the past is I like to go with a postcard strategy. Um, you can okay. like back in the day, like these were designed um, even I have what I did was I would keep like a um, like a binder of all my mailing campaigns. So this is I, this is the only one that I found in my garage. So it's 2019. So it's got some of my compass stuff in there. But basically you can go in Canva or like if you have like, you know, I see some compass agents on here, right? You can theoretically just go to the marketing center. Um, I, I don't know, Cole Banker, I see Stacy there. Like if you guys have some brokerages offer like marketing centers where you can literally just go type in templates for this. If not, just go to Canva, right? And so you can actually just design your piece to have um, some sort of image of the community on the front. I think that's really important. So like if you're farming downtown San Diego to have a picture of like the building that you're farming or the local East village of what you're farming, that's really helpful. Um, and then on the, the back, it's going to be some information about you. And then what I like to do is draw attention to a landing page. I think that the, the, the key to the entire geographic farming operation is having a multi-channel approach where you have the postcard because what happens to most people is they get this postcard and it goes right into the trash. So there is a little bit of like a branding play to have your face, 
you have the geographic area, but if you have any type of a landing page, you're going to capture a lot more information and interest that way. And now this was actually a, my 2019 binder, but now we actually use QR codes. So you can actually just go on to just Google QR code generator and you can type in your QR code and just have it be a landing page on your website. Um, and if you don't have a website, um, you can probably Google like uh, landing pages. You know what I mean? There's probably like third party services that offer just landing pages, just single page to where when people go there, there's a video of you on front and center, basically saying, Hey, in this case, it was the Savita neighborhood, right? So I was like, Hey, Savita, what's up? It's Jason. Thanks for getting, uh, or thanks for, um, thanks for visiting our webpage. I've dropped a video below with a little bit of a market update for Savita. And then if you want more information about your home specifically, uh, enter your information. And so on the landing page, we'll have a video, like a welcome video, some sort of like a market update, whether it be stats or a video that you've shot even better. Cause again, you're getting your face out there. And then lastly, a place for them to get a home valuation. So it could be like, they can enter their address. And if you have one of those automated widgets, that's even better. But like some people don't have that. So they can just enter their address and then you have to get them a CMA really quick. But basically you want some sort of landing page to, to, to accompany the postcard piece. And so there's some there's some kind of thoughts like I've been working with this handwriting company called Celebrity Agent for a while, and they don't like QR codes. They want the per, they want you to put your um, your phone number on the actual farm piece. I think that that's probably true if you're doing a handwritten piece. But if you're just doing postcards, I think having the QR code on the back or the landing page is better uh, because it gives them something else to go to where they're going to then see um, your face. You're, they're going to see that your knowledge about the market area. Um, so having some sort of landing page is is better, right? So again, you can design these in Canva. You can do if you if your brokerage offers um, you know some sort of a template, that's great. What I what I do is typically a four postcard rotation. So that's that's three per year. We go through this rotation three times because it's four because it's one a month that I'm sending out this postcard. You want to be more into it? Send it twice a month. Um, I think one a month is fine. So what I'll do here, and I'll show some examples. So what I'll do is I'll do like, first of, first and foremost, if you're establishing a brand new farm, you're just starting from scratch, your first piece is going to be like an intro piece. So that piece might just have like your headshot on it, a little bit of stats about you, right? Um, hey, hi, I'm Jason. I'm new to the community or hi, I'm Jason. I've lived here for 10 years, um, but I wanted to start to reach out and offer my services, offer my insight, right? Some sort of an intro piece. And you almost want to chalk that up as a one-off because that's just going out as like to introduce yourself. And then maybe on the back, it's got a landing page, you know, which is your website or something like that, right? So the first thing you're going to do is an intro piece, and then you're going to get into the four um, card rotation. So the first card I'm usually going to set out is a, a market stats update, right? And so it's going to be, here's an example. This was 2018, I found this binder, but these were three areas that I was farming in 2018, right? So it's the Civita community, the Icon building, which is in the Lab OM building. So these were two specific buildings, one in downtown, one in North Park that I had had some success in. Um, again, this isn't necessary, but a good way to start a farm is if you have a listing in that neighborhood and you just want to establish a farm. So with Icon and Lab OM specifically, I was working in downtown and North Park and I had had multiple listings in these buildings. So I just decided to farm them because I'm like, hey, I've got some past successes. And so again, when you're sitting at the coffee table and you're starting to pitch your services, you can be like, oh yeah, you know, I sold 2104 and I sold unit 410. It's a lot easier of a conversation because you have some success in the building. And then I actually, Savita was the same way. I had a, a listing in there. I wanted to start to, to farm the neighborhood. So these pieces, you can see what I just did. I think these were actually my old marketing assistant at my old brokerage designed these, but it's just like a market update for that building specifically, or in Savita, it was the whole neighborhood. And it just talked about, you know, how many deals had closed year to date, how many, what was the average market time, average sale price, how many active listings. So it's basically just a piece with some sort of imagery about that particular farm right? All three of these have an image of either the building. This is the rooftop view from the icon building. And then this is the big sign that is at the entrance of the Svita community. So it's kind of like the noticeable landmark of that. And it's got some information about like what's going on in that building. And then on the back, it's just a little bit of a note that's like, hey, welcome to May. It was great meeting you at our open house at Summit last week. You've probably already gotten your just sold piece about our recent sale. 
Um, I've got, um, you know, I've got some information about the market update. Please visit our landing page, www.soldincivita.com. Now that was actually before QR codes were even back because this was 2018, but like theoretically now you can just say, Hey, visit the QR code for more information. And that's where they're going to go. They're going to have your video with your market update and then the information for them to drop their thing. Um, on this one, I got, you know, I had like on Fiverr, I think, uh, duplicate my signature. So then it was like, it was a note from me kind of with my little signature on the bottom. But those were the postcards that I was sending. Uh, so that first piece is like a market update piece, right? Where you're just updating your farm about what's happening in their farm. There's some other ones that I have that are more like, here's the seven sales that happened this quarter. You know what I mean? Or this in the last three months. So it'll be like the, the seven addresses. You've seen those too. Those work too. It's just like a little informative piece. Um, the next piece that I would be sending to that same group would be like, a, what, what's your home worth? Um, and I've done a few of these different ones. So this one was, again, I'm using the same kind of imagery. I think I shifted it a little bit on the icon one. So like a night picture of, of the, the ballpark, but it was just like, um, want to know what your home is worth. And then on the back, it's like for the first time in five years, a, a little blurb about what the market's doing and then visit www.soldaticon.com, right? So, so then they would get this piece and then they could visit the website landing page to get more information and then they can go there. So this one, actually this one had some some more market stats on the bottom of the last quarter as well you know so we've gone with a market update we've gone to what's your home worth and then lastly we went to a oh here's another example of like a what's your home worth piece i like this one a lot my graphic designer did that and it's basically just a, a screenshot of what the landing page looked like and then so if they visited the landing page that's what would pop up and then it's a way for them to put in their address so they can get a home valuation you know and then again it was kind of just like a what's your home worth piece um, and then lastly, you would have, or thirdly, you would have a review piece. Um, and so I don't have that. I don't have one of those cards here, but basically it's something that uh, what I like to, the header I like to put was what your neighbors are saying, right? Because like people, it plays on the fact that like people want to do what their neighbors are doing, or they want to know, bingo, there you go. Josh has one right there. What your neighbors are saying. That's exactly right. So it's, it's what your neighbors are saying about us or what your neighbors are saying. And then it's a review from someone in that geographic farm. Cause a lot of times like, so you can even put on the bottom from Josh Hill or Jay Hill seller 833 banana street or whatever that is. Right. And so like, it's, then they see that and they're like, Oh, that's that sale. He had a good experience. Like this guy knows our neighborhood. Right. And so it's a little bit of like a review piece. Um, and then again, on the back, there's a blurb from you and a link to the landing page. Every time on the back, a, li a little blurb from you link to the landing page so that then they could go and then they can see more reviews there, you know, and on that page, it's going to be a video market update, more reviews and a place for them to put in their home address. And then the last piece, the fourth piece that I like to do is a social proof piece. And so that would be something like, you know, it might be a map of the geographic area with all the dots of homes that you, or if you don't have enough, your company, right? So like, this is where you get to rely, like, Stacy, if you don't have a lot of homes in Savita, Cole Banker might, right? So like, I'll, lit I'll literally just go as, as far as I can where it's not lying, but I'll say like, here's how all the homes that are, uh, that Cole Banker has sold in the area or that we've sold in the area and have it be like, if you don't have enough social proof, just use your company, you know, or your team or whatever, you know? So you've got four pieces. The last one being a social proof piece. Basically that should be going out once a quarter and you can use either the last quarter or the last half month or you know half year or at the end of the year piece that first one it might be your previous year's numbers you know what i mean it might be like we helped 56 uh, families buy or sell homes last year uh, visit the webpage see see if we can help you or whatever that might be so there's four pieces in a geographic farm that's hopefully close to where you live 500 to 1000 is a great start you want to find um, a, a community that has over 6% turnover rate. That's a Tom Ferryism there. Um, again, it's, uh, I'm not saying like, if there's a perfect community that you happen to live in and it's at 5% farm it, you know what I mean? But ultimately like you're looking for more than 6% turnover rate. I don't, I mean, truthfully coming into this last year and now moving into next year, you might have trouble finding 6% turn turnover rate anywhere is just because nobody is selling their houses anymore. Um, but the, the way you do that is actually shout out to Jason Mellon right there is you call your title rep. Um, and what you can do is you can actually screenshot your, your neighborhood that you wanna farm and draw like a geographic, like a polygon around, send it to your title rep and say, hey, can I get all that mailing addresses in this area, right? And you might be able to, you know, Jason probably know, if I tell him Savita, he could, he'll probably know what I'm talking about. Or if I tell him a certain address, he'll know what I'm talking about. But for, for if you wanna specifically do it, you can actually circle an area 
we'll get into, you can also do EDDM if you want to do uh, every door direct, it makes the postcards cheaper, but you have less control over where they go. Plus it says, I believe maybe someone correctly, it doesn't say, it says like homeowner, right? It doesn't say their name on the bulk mail that, that I don't remember. Anyways, so you have your I think our EDDM said the homeowner's name. It says the homeowner's name. That's cool. But so, so like here, Savita didn't work for me, um, that, which is that neighborhood Savita for doing EDDM because there's two uh, like apartment complexes like in the same mail route and you can't exclude those out because it's part of the mail route. So when you do EDDM, it goes to the entire mail route. Whereas if you do bulk mail first class, you can actually pick the addresses. So what you'll do is from your title rep, you'll get a CSV or like an Excel sheet of all the addresses and mailing and stuff um, in your farm. And then you can send that to your printer. Um, I use Express Docs um, and that's a web-based one. So it's not like a local company. So any of you guys could probably in, in America anyways, I see a Canadian in here um, and anybody can use Express Docs. You upload your audience first, which is the CSV that you're gonna get from your title rep. And then um, you go and you actually send your PDF, your print piece that you've made in Canva or your template. And you just tell Express Docs, hey, send this bulk mail using this CSV or this Excel sheet, use the first name field, right? So that it imports the first name field, like, hey, Richard, instead of saying, hey, homeowner, um, so that it'll go out. And then basically you just ship it out. And usually it takes, you know, three to five days or something like that to get delivered. Um, extra little pro tip. You can also put your address somewhere in there in the middle. So you know when it gets delivered. I like to do that just as like a, a sneaky test piece. So that when, when I get it in my mailbox at home, I know it's been delivered um, um, there. So. Um, anyways, that's kind of like the strategy I use when I geographic farm, um, secondarily, and I'll, then I'll come back, I'll open it up and we can share some advice here. But what I like to do is like, while you're doing that, so theoretically, say you've gone eight months now, uh, you've probably had a couple people reach out to you, get valuations of their home. Maybe you have a listing in the neighborhood. Again, we talked about this You're Hopefully you're also open housing in that neighborhood. So like if you have other agents that are friends that have listings in there or just vacant listings, if you, any at bat you can get to get your signage around the neighborhood is going to be helpful. Even if it's not your listing, hopefully someone else will let you, let you farm it and open it up. Um, you can start to do like small little events in the neighborhood where you can then invite the homeowners to it. Right. So if there's like a bar or like a wine shop or something in the neighborhood, um, host a small little event there, a couple hundred dollars, right? Reserve it out for a couple hours, have a wine Wednesday. But then that gives you a reason to go like door knock the entire neighborhood because you can drop off invites to your wine Wednesday. So theoretically, like now you're starting to get signage out and getting a little bit of like visibility throughout the neighborhood. And then when it's like the jackpot will hit when you get a listing in the neighborhood. So then you're probably going to do a just listed and a just sold card to the entire your entire farm. I would recommend that those be handwritten pieces. And so now we're getting into like the nitty gritty. So if you have a thousand, that's going to be kind of tougher to do. But like if you, what you may do for that is you may actually just take the 250 homes like closest to that home, like the neighbors, and then you actually write them a handwritten letter that's like, hey, I've got this listing is coming soon. I'm inviting the neighbors only to like, an, to, or I'm inviting the neighbors to a neighbors only open house and have it be like the first hour of your four hour open house be for neighbors only. But it's a reason to mail them a handwritten letter. Here, let me see if I can show you this too. Cause what I like to do usually is I'll handwrite, I'll print the letter. Like I'll have one letter on like just a, a regular thing and it'll be a couple paragraphs, right? I'll talk about the house. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, si I'll hand sign with a different color ink, the, the signature. So like I'll print out my letter in black and then I'll hand sign my name at the bottom in blue. Then I'll trifold that letter, put it in a regular envelope and then hand write the, the address. See, and then sometimes I'll get like a little insert. Here we go. This is like a little insert. So it's like three and a half by eight and a half, right? So it fits in an envelope and I'll put that in the middle of the trifold and that'll just show off a little bit about like the property. This one was in escrow, but like it could also just say coming soon, eight, three, six, four. And it's got your photos on it. And then it's like, hey neighbors, I'm sending this out to you guys first. A lot of times like the neighbors have someone who wants to move in, whatever you want to put on the little card, but it's really just getting another piece in front of them. And it's a handwritten piece. Um, and then you do the same thing, maybe without the insert, but the same thing when it sells. Um, so then you can sit, hit the same 250 people. What I like to do on that one is maybe tell like a little bit of a story about 
the buyer or how that went down. There's it, every sale we have has some little wrinkle or some little story. You know, it might not be the greatest story ever, but maybe it is. But it's like, hey, I just wanted to tell you that you know, a follow up on one, two, three, Banana Street. Just let you know, we got it into escrow. There were four offers. We ended up going 15k over. Um, you know, that the 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 uh, buyer that we chose. It was this young couple. They're coming in from Boston. Like you're gonna love them, right? It's some sort of a story a reason that you're sending out that handwritten letter. So every time you get a listing, not only is it glorious because you can open house it, you can invite all the neighbors to an open house and then you get to share your success story all while you're still farming consistently. Um, that's basically with the multi-channel approach of having the landing page, um, that's, that's what I consider my multi-channel approach to the farm. And I, th those have worked really, really well for us, um, both you know in all three of our farms. And then we've modified a little bit and I'll go into that in a second, but like, ultimately that's that's how i determine a geographic farm and that's how we uh that's how we set out does anybody else uh anybody else have anything to to share or ask about that josh it looks like you may be doing something similar i like it yeah i've been doing it for a little over a year and a half and i'm on a three postcard campaign or a three postcard rotation so four times a month how four uh, times a, four times uh, a yeah. quarter or whatever four times a year yeah what uh how many we're good at math i promise i know how many homes are in it 1100 perfect and then how what's your cost per postcard like ship um well the yeah so i i do have a relationship with a company who helps me with that um and it works out to be about 80 cents that sounds about right. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. So, so, so I think if you do EDDM, you can get it down to like seventy-five or seventy cents. If you do bulk, it's like eighty-five or ninety or something like that. That's actually why the eighty number is ringing out is because I think. Uh, well, I I know I send the same postcard to also my top two hundred clients, past clients. Um, basically the same template but slightly different information. And so, yeah, I think the EDDM is closer to seventy cents. And the uh, the Excel list of addresses that I send to them has to take a little bit more work, so that's probably closer to eighty five cents. Yeah, for sure, um, that's dope. And it's and you would say it's it's working for you. It's successful. It has. We, uh, yeah, we've generated um, we've generated <laughs> uh, home valuation requests and one listing. It's it's funny because like obviously the the conventional wisdom is like you don't start a um, a farm unless like you can run it for six to twelve months at least you know without getting a listing. But a lot of times you'll find depending on again how saturated the farm is and things like that what the turnover rate is you typically get conversations starting kind of right out of the gate and then your first listing might come at three to six months. But sometimes you get lucky like the first piece I sent out in the Love One farm ended up with listings. You know what I mean? And then you're just like cruising at that point and it's so cheap. It, there is a time consuming part to it when you, especially if you're getting into the handwriting of the letters or the hand signing and folding, uh, obviously you could probably find, you know, if you have an assistant or you find someone, but like when I was doing the handwritten le letters for those back in 2018, like I had nothing else going on anyway. So I was just doing those at home. I was like watching TV or whatever, you know, and it takes maybe a day or two to actually hand stuff the whole thing. It's not that crazy, you know, for a couple hours each night. Um, but if you get up to the point where you're trying to do that for like a thousand plus, then you may need like someone to do it for you. It might, might get a little bit expensive, but yeah, you know what's crazy about that listing lead is they never engaged with any of our other marketing, and all they did was they went to the custom URL on the postcard to request a home valuation, didn't say anything about, you know, hey, we've been receiving your postcards for, for months, or even that, you know, we're in, in South Scottsdale where this property is. They just requested the home valuation. I put two and two together real quick. I'm like, that's in our, that's in our firm. Yeah. And, you know, really made sure that we won that listing and they never mentioned the postcards ever during, you know, the initial process. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm glad that I, I put two and two together quickly. And, um, but it was almost at a year to the, to the day. I mean, I want to say it was in the 11th month ish. And I was yeah. like, you know, this is what people say, six to 12 months. Yep. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so like, it takes a while to get the, the market traction a little bit, but like, if you can get one in the first year, you're, you're playing with house money at that point. And then you're starting to establish it. But, and then it's like a consistency thing. You can never stop. It's like, when you stop, someone else is going to pick up your mantle. A lot of times too, with, with absentee owners, 
like like they, they may just not be ready to they, they don't have that same relationship a lot of times with a lot of real estate agents if they're absentee owners they're just you know it's an investment property i found that a lot more with the condos that i was selling because a lot of the absentee owners were just they were investment properties and they lived out of town now um and so like they it was basically like whoever happened to mail them when they were ready would get the call like there was random like people i would get a call and he's i've never talked to this person before like, I know, you know what I mean? He was like, yeah, I got your mailer here. I just wanted to uh, follow up with you. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. It's like, just, I think I just happened to, um, and, and, you know, the person who yeah. sold him his condo was still like relevant. They were still an agent. And I'm like, oh, like, well, how'd you find us? He's like, well, I got your mailer. I figured I'd call. You yeah. know, uh, one of our pieces just recently turned into, I mean, maybe he'll sell, but he probably wants to keep the property in that neighborhood smartly. Um, but what I, one of my rotations is a just listed, just sold. And some months I have some months I have so many. This is um this is taking a strategy from um the, uh, Dan Beers, uh, who he uh, re recommends I believe uh, using the the front of the home, not necessarily 100% of the time in that in that geographic farm um, because it is still of course it is still mine and it is still just sold. So this is in the neighborhood, and then these are nearby. And is there a just listed on here? No, there's not. So it must have been another month. But he was calling about a just listed on there and saying, hey, I was actually calling about that property. Can oh, you wow. tell me more about it? I maybe and so we got to talking. It ended up not working for him. And he said, Well, can you help me find something else like it? I was like, Yeah, that's great. That's dope. Yeah. Anytime you can provide value that they don't already have, you're you've got an edge up. You know what I mean? Because when you've got three seconds to kind of catch their attention from the postcard to the trash like basically they're kind of like glancing over it and then it's gone. But if there's something that's like, Hey, we've got this listing that's off market or coming soon or something that they can't find anywhere else. Now they're more likely to hit the QR code to find out more. The thing, the interesting thing that I think is working and, and I'll continue to do is the just listed are have a lot like high color contrast. Um, so I think they catch your eye more than the uh, proof of success or the, the review. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so maybe they stand out a little bit more, but yeah. It, it worked for sure. Jason, what, what are, what are some of the agents that you work with that farm really heavily? What are they doing successfully? I think it's the, um, especially in today's day and age, like, I think you guys, you both mentioned really important things that are like multi-channel opportunities within it, because the day of just like sending off the postcard and like, that's kind of it banking on the phone call is pretty pretty hard. So yeah, the, the fact that people are super comfortable now scanning QR codes. I had a client in 2018, 2019, trying so hard to push a QR code. And I'm like, I'm tech savvy and I'm not QR coding with an app and all that. And now everything's so easy. So sending them to where you actually need to capture them as a lead to drift them into whatever the next step is, is super, super important. Um, but we talk about the consistency of it being so dang important. Like I know the, I know you, Jason, you recently did a video of the horrible, um, you know, date the rate, marry the home thing. And I have been saying forever, I'm like, we want to like marry our farm area. We are not dating around splashing things and, you know, two months in quitting because man, this is the most expensive marketing you can do is a freaking postcard. It seems, you know, so being super consistent, the market stats that sure everybody has access to Zillow and all that, but if they're not actively looking for it, they're not looking it up, you know? So putting the market stats in front of them, I have a client who sends two market updates to both of his farms every single month, one, you know, and he's got a great capture rate in, uh, in his community in Escondido. So I think it's consistency. It's the multi-channel, it's getting them into the rest of your ecosystem and being involved is has to be the most important thing in, in the geographic farm. And uh, Josh said something that I preach a lot too that I don't think a lot of people do, which is drop your past clients and sphere into your mailing. Because even if, like, you know, even if they're your best friend and they're gonna start the home process, most times they're gonna start off on a Zillow or something like that. So just let them know you're still having success, you're in the business, like you don't want those people to to forget about you because those are really your your bread and butter of people. So I think that's a great, great tip there.
Yeah, for sure. And so with the geographic farm, sometimes it might not be a relevant piece, but every third piece, which is a review piece or every fourth piece, which is a social proof piece, those could theoretically go to anybody. It doesn't necessarily have to be like your farm. So having, yeah, your, your past clients, I was thinking about that. Cause I have like in my CRM, I have, a, you know, around 200 past clients that are our homeowners now like past buyers or like that still own their home. And I'm like, I should be farming them too with like a random piece because like not as much as I like to think it, not everybody follows me on social media. And even if they do, they don't see every piece. Cause like it only shows to, you know, 10% of your following or whatever that is. So like, while, while the social media numbers are great, it's like not all your, your past clients actually even see all your, your stuff. So if you're just assuming, and I, I'm guilty of this myself, that social media will catch them. Well, like they may, they may not have heard from you for six months or a year. And then, yeah, then they're going to go to someone else. Um, yeah. I used to be able to geographically target the farm with Facebook ads too, but now you can't do that per the zip code anymore. So at one point I was actually running YouTube pre-roll ads of the market update to the zip code of the market. And I was running Facebook lead ads to the zip code of the, the, the farm as well. Um, but you can't, you can't zip code target anymore. So I'm, I've been playing to see if I can like draw the circle around, um, I, I'm trying to find a way to get back into that, but that like, there was a, a time where it was getting like YouTube, Facebook mailers, and then they would on, they would come to our landing page, which was actually built on our website, which had retargeting on it too. So even if they would come and then leave, then they would get banner ads on ESPN.com and foxnews.com, whatever it is that they bounced around to go to next, they would then get our banner ads too. Cause we were using ad roll to retarget the people who came to the landing page. Um, which yeah, that's been turned off since we moved to real because I need to redo the banner ads, but that is something that's like really effective to have the retargeting on your website. Yeah, just that. And then not because I don't want to make this a, any kind of commercial, but your title partner should have so much data. And we all pretty much have, you know, great platforms that are updating all the time. They automatically break down all the features of it. So let's say you're getting started and I know Josh's um, farms about a thousand homes if you can't market to all a thousand for budget constraints, like start somewhere and niche it down to however you need. And your title partner should 110% be able to easily do that for you on a monthly basis on how, or however much you're mailing. Um, and then lean on them. If you are trying to do other things with the Facebook ads, and obviously it's been more restrictive, but you know, there's companies out there that provide contact info that make great custom audiences for Facebook and stuff. So just lean on those people around you because the data is out there and that's the most important thing. And so you don't have to be an expert or, you know, out of pocket on extra stuff, but lean on your partners to make sure you guys are getting what you need to uh, have the best chance of success in a farm, which means, you know, consistency. So, yeah, you know, the, um, the farm that I chose it's not a true subdivision. This part of South Scottsdale doesn't have a lot of um, true subdivisions. It's more, you know, it's more like an area of similar um, age construction homes and and overall lifestyle. And shout out to my um, title partner. I'm glad you mentioned that because she helped me choose an, two EDDM routes. Both were about 550, so that's where I came up with the 1100. And I was initially considering just doing 550 to start with, and that would have been a very reasonable price per month. I ended up doing two um, next to each other, but I didn't think that you could get that targeted with, I think a lot of people think EDDM routes won't be that, um, you know, won't be that, uh, have much of a cohesive, um, you know, vibe or, or, or target. And, and I really could, we, we considered probably five to six routes around each other. And then I chose, and I, I had to do my own kind of like market analysis to, to figure out the turnover rate. And, uh, and I'm really confident in these two routes and, um, you know, how valuable they are to, to our overall plan. And I also got to say, it, it took a little bit of um, mind, you know, it, it required a little bit of a, a mind shift to include my past clients in there. I thought maybe it would feel too spammy to, to send some of the similar content to my past clients, but I haven't had any complaints from the past clients and, and sphere on that list of 200. In fact, I've gotten compliments and, uh, you know, occasional comments about, you know, man, you're crushing it. Are you, are you farming all the way out here? Like, 10 miles away from your office and I go yes <laughs> not really but um they they didn't even 
uh, yeah, I haven't had any complaints about it. It's been a great, great feedback. So, um, cool. What else? Anything else? I wanted to ask, so I've got it through my brokerage with our marketing department. Um, and it's pretty like, it's pretty much your piece um, one and two. So it has a QR code with for home valuation and then has like the market update. And I'm doing my neighborhood that I live in. Um, I was going to ask you what people thought of that, having just the one piece a month that's essentially essentially the same thing every month, except that the data and the numbers are changing versus if I should stick with something like that or try to kind of go out more on my own and hit the four pieces like you suggested. Well, the four pieces rotation, I think is, I've always liked that. And I can't, I mean, I, it was 2017 or 18 when I heard this, but I, it was like a Tom Ferry summit or somewhere that I took that away. So I didn't make that up. It was, it came from somewhere. Someone told me the four rotation you're supposed to do, um, or maybe it was geograph. Yeah. So it was Tom Ferry at the summit and the, he is partner or like he was an investor or something with this company called geographicfarming.com back then. I don't even know if they're still around or if they still work together and they were on stage at the summit and they're the ones who gave me that four, that four rotation. So I always used it. Um, now that being said, like four pieces, my, my thought is, is if it's the same piece, like it just, it, you'll capture one fourth of the audience who care about that type of piece, but like somebody might not care about the market stats. They want to know about your social proof, or they might want to know about reviews. So that's why I think it's just capturing maybe a different eye that that's why they kind of taught it that way. Um, that being said, I'd rather you send out a piece every month. That's the same than not do it at all. Right. Like you're sure. still getting yourself out there, but I think mixing up the messaging a little bit is going to help because you might just attract a different person who didn't, you know what I mean? Like that, that's all. Cause you're still going to yeah. throw that out that mark. Cause how much does the market change month to month? You know what I mean? So theoretically, like, I don't think that the person who's into the market stats, they, if they looked at it in January, they might not look at it again in February. Cause like how much really changed, but if you're giving it to them in January, April, July, you know what I mean? Every fourth month, then it's like, Oh, it's been a while since I've checked on the market. They might check it more, but then you give three, three other at bats to like attract someone new. I feel like that's, that's right. just my theory. I don't know if that's backed by anything, but. I did get no, that, that from a geographic farming company. So there has to be something to that. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I remember because I was working with this company, still am kind of, it's called Celebrity Agent. And it's a platform that does geographic farming for you, but by hand. Um, so they, they use the bots that send out um, like hand, uh, it looks like a handwritten piece and it'll come on a letter and it's like, hey, neighborhood's hot, market's up. If, you, if you're interested in more, text this number. And then they'll text or call that number and it'll go to like your phone routed, you know? Um, and so, but they told me, I remember talking to him, I, I think you may have reached out to them, right, William, or something in like South Carolina has like the worst. Yeah, there was, yeah, there was like some weird, work with you. yeah, there was some weird laws. Yeah. Cause we had the, um, one of the speaker sessions with refer. Yep. Yeah. And I reached out to them and cause it, it looked odd cause I'm, I'm interested in, I mean, it's super easy. What's offered to me by my brokerage through the marketing department, but definitely was like looking to change up a little bit. And you had the speaker session. They're like, yeah, what we do is like illegal in South Carolina. So we yeah. can't even operate. Yes. Yeah, so I remember talking to him. He came to our studio summit, um, a couple of months ago. And then I was, he's like, yeah, we talked to Will in Charleston and he's like, but we can't, that's like the only only state we can't mail in or something and it has to do with your your laws or something like that um so, so now, like in case people are curious i also i use a handwriting service and it's called handwritten but it's called with a y um and i'm very happy with it it looks do you awesome do that more for one-off then like thank you cards more for one-off yeah but you can upload you can upload mailing lists yeah you so wouldn't want to make it typically i think yeah it's like three or four dollars a piece right like or something like that if you do like there's a note or something there's another one that is more for thank you notes and stuff like that i think it's three or four dollars a piece and then if you use like celebrity agents like a dollar fifty a piece because it's just a postcard it's like two dollars and fifty cents if you do a, an envelope um stuffed but it's like but you also have to buy their platform which is like a thousand dollars a month or something like that and on their thing it's like they actually can also target all of your past clients. So you upload your your past client list and they send quarterly or monthly updates. You can also do what are called orphan buyers. So they 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 have a plug into your MLS and then they look at all the homes you sold where you represented the listing. Um, but then theoretically there's a buyer of that home that wasn't your client, but like you can continue mailing and say, hey, I sold this home back in 2017. Here's a market update. And it's like, 90% of people don't end up working with the same agent. And so it's like a way to get orphan buyers is what they're called. 
And then they have another one where it's like uh, more like a likely to sell. So their platform is more in depth, which is why you have to pay for the platform, but they do handwritten mailers. What I was trying to get at more so than plugging them was the handwritten piece is that there's companies like that where you can actually do your farm via handwritten. It's just going to be more expensive. Um, and I think that if you can get a handwritten envelope on the outside with a real stamp, that's almost like a hundred percent open rate versus a postcard or a, a, a typed with, you know what I mean? Like think, think about just yourself. If you get mail and it's like, you can tell it's an ad or whatever, you just rip it and throw it away. But if it's a handwritten with a real stamp, you're probably going to open it. Um, and, and so like you get a better at bat, a better capture rate. If you have a handwritten campaign, um, it's just way harder. It's just tougher to scale. Right. Cause it's, it's like, who's going to do all that. Um, anyways, Stace. I do do all that. Cause I don't get like dozens of inquiries, you know, on each mailer. So whenever somebody comes to my mailer and does the QR code and gets the home valuation or whatever, they get a literal handwritten. I have like my personalized um, letterhead and I literally, I mean, I have good handwriting and a lot of, I see a lot of guys here. <laughs> It'd be a troublesome, you know, but I, uh, I do literally write the handwritten letter. I say, thank you so much for logging into my website. And then I include a couple um, printed promotional materials, like from the Cole Banker marketing yeah. um, backend. And, you know, I've gotten good response to that too. They say, wow, you literally took time to write it. Yeah. Um, it's in my own handwriting, you know, and, and they think they can tell. And I've gotten good response to that too. Actually, when I first started geographic farming, three months in, I got a listing and it was because I they did that. They logged into the QR code. I sent them a handwritten letter and they said that they liked the personal touch. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I think I remember someone, maybe it was a Tom Ferry thing or maybe it was somewhere else where they, they any, so they would get an inquiry like that, you know, but then it's like, they never connected with the person. They would go to their house and knock on their door and like door knock them. I'm like, that's savage. I don't know if I would do that, but, but I can and see like. My, yeah, and I just, my brokerage does that. She'll drop a uh, little box of like candy or something like that at their house if they're not home yeah that's savage i mean but but ultimately like those people gave you their address you know but but sometimes too it's like yeah, i don't know like and maybe they're just looking for a home valuation but they're not really ready so like if someone showed up at your door that might be a lot but i'm also not a door knocker so like i, I think any door knocking is weird so um so don't take my word for it um but anyways um i'm up against i gotta go to a, a sewer scope inspection so um i call them the colonoscopies you, you, you ever had them do that where they run the camera down the thing it's weird um so i gotta get out of here they always find something they always find something cast iron all these homes were built in the 50s here in san diego and so like they always find some root intrusion or something but uh anyways i wanted to close it up did anybody else have anything last second that they wanted to to ask nope we're back next Thursday. Okay, so um, next Thursday, I'm going to be in San Antonio, but I come back, I, I, I shortened the trip. So I'm going to come back Wednesday night specifically for this Thursday. No, just kidding. So um, Thursday, we're going to have a 10 a.m. or it's going to be at 11 a.m. I'll send out an email because we have a refer speaker session at 10. So it'll be on Thursday, but it'll, it'll be at 11 a.m. So um, dope. I'll send out an email update everybody now. Jason, are you going to the game tonight? Yeah, me too. How much were how much were your tickets? Uh, I got in part of the horrible Ticketmaster pre-sale, so mine was like eighty nine bucks, like right on the first base foul pole, like section one twenty five. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. That's still really good. I I paid like six twenty yeah. or something like that for my ticket, and I, I'm in the Toyota Terrace. You know what yeah. I mean? Like so. So when we were looking, it's like three hundred to get into the upper deck now. It's like five to 600 to get into the Toyota Terrace, which is where we're sitting. And then it's like, it's 750 plus for the premier club. And it's like a thousand for lower level in between the bases. Like, I, I think like where you're talking about now is probably like 300, 400, something like that. Yeah. They were, they were about 300 last time I looked like yeah. years ago. Yeah. It's gonna be a while. I, I'm, we're going down there at like two though. Just we're going to yeah, get, get rid of my kid first and then I'll be down there. My I'm wife, be work she'll be working on first base. So if you're on that on that side so who your be, wife oh yeah. she's like a pod squad girl right? she's uh, one of the ball girls the ball girls yeah jessica Je jessica it's her jessica's dream job oh yeah yeah and just play softball with us and her on sundays and mondays and all that so should be uh, good cool i'll see you down there it's gonna be i have a feeling the east village is just gonna be wild we haven't had playoff baseball since i've lived in san diego i think it's been yeah. like 15 years right i was a senior in high school so 
since we because they had made it in 2020 uh, to the divisional round yeah, but that, that was in <laughs> texas um because they uh they had all the games in that empty stadium yeah. anyways all right guys thanks so much thanks jason thanks jason hi thank you padres thank you jason